Hey guys, this is Matt. I just got home from work and I was getting ready to post the video for this week, but um, I'm, I'm filming about two weeks behind to kind of give myself a buffer on, you know, making sure I can keep videos uh, coming out each week. But I did want to take a second to thank everybody that su subscribed, watched the videos last week. It was kind of crazy getting like 5,000 subscribers in less than two days. So um, I really appreciate that. I did want to mention that I am going to pr try to post videos about once a week, at least for right now. Um, I do have a lot of things planned. Like I said, I just wanted to thank everybody for the support before this video took forever to come out. So I, you know, this is, it's June 12th. So the, today's video is basically just going to be me going over the car, more specifics. Um, maybe you guys will get some tips on what to look for, for your next project car and, you know, going through the car thoroughly to find, you know, basically a parts list of all the items that you're gonna need, you know, for all the projects that you're wanting to do for your car. No hate on Chris or no hate on any of the previous owners. I knew 90% of what I was getting when I bought the car. There were a few small things that I wasn't aware of, but they're nothing major. I have been tracking down many of the parts that you guys are gonna see me point out that I need in this video. I also wanted to address a bunch of the more popular questions and comments that came up on my first two videos. So the car does not have a quick disconnect steering wheel, but I do, I'm supposed to get one any day now. So I'm, I'm not sure what's happened with the shipping on that, but I do have a quick disconnect for the steering wheel. Long-term, that may not be the steering wheel we keep anyway. Um, yes, the seats are clunky to get in and out of, and hopefully everybody got that I was just being a little silly about trying to get in and out of the car. It is a little bit difficult to get in and out of, but I'm, I, I was being dramatic in the video. Air ride suspension is probably one of the items that are higher on my list of things I'm gonna to work towards. Uh, I think I would like to address some of the smaller things that we've got to deal with. Um, and you know, when I say make the car safe, I'm, I'm probably, I probably mean reliable. Uh, and, and because the car is new to me, I'm not 100% sure what it's been through. I, I don't know when the last time it's had you know, certain maintenance items done. So when I'm, saying, when I'm saying making the car safe, I'm really just referencing making it reliable and making sure I feel comfortable with the condition of the car. A lot of you have asked where I live in Kentucky and I'll just say I live in central Kentucky. Uh, the central Kentucky is where most of the filming will take place for my videos. The future of the RX-7 is really kind of up in the air. If I wanted to maximize my investment, I would probably restore the car. Uh, you know, the fenders and things like that that were cut, or I can get those replaced. The rear uh, quarter panels and fenders that have been cut out for the wide body kit, that would be probably the hardest thing to do. Not impossible. I have found skins online um, to reskin that, but you know, it would probably be easier to find a donor car and cut those panels out and try to patch it back in, which it's gonna take a lot of body work and probably the help of some people that are a little more skilled with that than I am. So um, that that's still on the table. I haven't ruled that out yet. Uh, it's definitely not something I'm working towards right now, but the um, but that could be something we do in the future. I mean, these cars easily will sell in decent condition for $25,000 or more. Um, and I paid way less than that when I got the car. So, you know, I definitely have room to invest money in the car, but then still, you know, in the future, if I wanted to get rid of it, uh, you know, make a profit. A lot of people have commented about the editing that I've been doing on my videos. And, and basically this is the third time I have tried to have a YouTube channel since 2009. Um, some of the other channels were just, I didn't stick with it long enough. I was in college, so I had a hard time producing regular content. I do have a little bit of experience with photography, so that helps as well. And so, yeah, I hope to bring really nice, clear content for you guys, and I'll strive to get better with each video. And so anyway, I, I'll, I'll try not to ramble too much. I just want to thank everybody that gave me support on that last video. It's really motivated me to get out and, and do more filming and do more videos and, and get more things going um, with this channel. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, again, I'm just going to go over the car very thoroughly with all of the, the bigger items that I'm gonna have to address. And, and again, I'm, I'm not gonna cover everything in the video. I'll just kind of point out some of the highlights, but you know, many of the people have commented in the video about things that they have seen, um, some under trays and things like that, that I, I've also noticed as well. So I really appreciate those comments when you guys see something. So anyway, on to today's video.
welcome to my garage. In today's video, I wanted to go over everything that is wrong with my RX-7. So looking at my list here, it looks like it's pretty much everything. So thank you for tuning in and look out for the next video. See you guys later. Okay, all jokes aside, there really is a lot that I'm gonna to have to address on this car. I've kind of broken it down into three basic categories of, of items. Cosmetic, mechanical, which includes the engine and drivetrain, uh, basically anything to make the car, you know, there's some oil leaks and things that we already kind of discussed in the previous video. And then the third list is safety, uh, things that I need to do to make sure the car is safe to drive on the road. I am still in the process of trying to get the registration complete. I do now have all the paperwork that I need but I do also need to be able to pass a safety inspection as part of the registration process here in Kentucky. Typically, they're just gonna look for the VIN number, verify that it matches all the documentation, but they may also wanna look at the headlights, taillights, turn signals, and, and all the stuff that would make the car safe to drive on the road. In my last video, I mentioned that the daytime running lights just stay on all the time. In fact, they're actually off right now and I can't even get them to turn on, so I have no idea what's going on with that. But that kit is also supposed to function as the front uh, turn signals, the blinkers. Uh, so I'm definitely gonna have to get that fixed before I can get the registration done. In my previous video, I also noticed that when I was backing out of the garage, uh, the reverse lights are not working. I, I did a preliminary inspection on the car. The bulbs look fine, the fuses look fine. Uh, so it's either down to a switch and the transmission or there's a potential that there's a disconnected wire, cut wire, shorted wire, any number of things. So we're gonna go through the car pretty thoroughly right now. I'll turn the camera off so you guys don't have to see all that, but I will go through the car, add to my list anything that I find in those three categories basically, and then I will come back and we'll go over some of the, the key items that we're gonna have to get addressed. Okay, I'm back. I have gone through everything again in the car and actually wrote down items that I basically didn't keep in my mind. It's a lot of little things probably. Uh, big picture, the car is actually in pretty decent shape. There are a few things that I'm kind of concerned about that I'll want to address sooner rather than later. Um, for my safety list, seeing how that's kind of what's important right now, like I mentioned, the blinkers, which actually during this preliminary uh, run through of the car, the blinkers actually started working. The daytime running lights went off, but the blinkers are working. So I have no idea what's going on. I do have the parts already on hand to replace that. I actually ordered the genuine Gretti uh, daytime running light kit. I know this body kit isn't necessarily Rocket Bunny branded, but I did go ahead and buy the Rocket Bunny light kit, figuring that it's probably decent quality and at least I can get some support if I do have some problems with that. So that'll actually be one of the next videos. Again, the reverse lights aren't working. I did find that the ABS light stays on in the car while I'm driving it. I know it's supposed to stay on for a little bit and then go off you know, once you get going, but it stays on all the time. And I did find that the 60 amp fuse and the one of the main fuse panels of the car is missing. So maybe there's a good chance that that just needs to have the fuse put back into the car. And whether or not we keep ABS in the future, I don't know. But for now, I'd like to at least get it on there just to make, sh just to make sure all systems are working. Uh, I found that there are some bolts for the seat brackets that are missing. Uh, I think there's like two, in two or three bolts in each of the seats. So I'd like to get, go ahead and get all four of the bolts for that. And I believe the brakes are pretty shot. The, it looks like the wear pattern on the inside, there's very little contact being made. The outsides actually look okay. They're not the greatest, but I think for safe, safe measure, I'll go ahead and want to replace all the brakes, all around discs and the, and the pads. But to get the registration, I think the brakes are okay to drive down to my DMV. So I'm probably not gonna address those now, but I will address those in the near future. I'll just have to get some parts on order and see what I want to do with the brake kit. The bulk of the list is cosmetic for sure. The exterior of the car, we've kind of gone over a little bit. Um, I'll do a quick video, a quick walk around here in a second to point out some of the, the highlights. Uh, the interior definitely needs a lot of work. Uh, just lots of little trim pieces and things that I will need to get a hold of. Uh, mechanically, without driving it a ton, I'll only be able to go off of the few things that I have seen. Engine oil leak, diff leak, I've mentioned that 10 times now, so those are things I'll have to look at. A lot of the fuse boxes are kind of loose in the engine bay, so I'll need to track down some hardware and get those mounted properly, uh, just, just to stop them from flopping around. The clutch is sticky to some degree, or I shouldn't say sticky, it, it, it releases the pressure if you hold the clutch in for too long, so there's probably a leak in the clutch master. 
the RX-7, the brake boot, the brakes in, the, the clutch share the same reservoir. And I've kept my eye on it and the reservoir seems fine. So it must just be an internal leak to, to the, the clutch master. So I'll either need to rebuild that or replace that. I did find a damaged wire loom that is actually, it's right up here underneath the, the fender, or in the fender. The front wheels do not have fender liners. So it's hard to say what happened if something got up in there and damaged the wire loom. So I'll probably just want to pull that some, out some to see if there's actually any damage to the wires or if it's just damage to the the uh, the plastic uh, protective um, like the hose that the, that, that wire loom resides in but that's something i want to look at and make sure there isn't any problems that could, could be contributing to some of the electrical problems that we're having on the car other than that we're going to have some basic maintenance that we're going to want to go ahead and do oil change transmission change fluid change rear differential oil change and then I, I don't think the ac is working properly and i'm hoping that we can do a charge on the system see how long it lasts or try to find a leak. So uh, I would like to get the AC working on the car. So that, that, that I put that on the mechanical. So without doing a whole lot of driving and you know really pushing the car, I really won't know 100% what's wrong mechanically. I am in the process of tracking down a shop locally that has a Mazda compression tester that can test the rotary engine. Because of the three pulses and all the stuff that the rotary has, having the Mazda compression tester will make life much easier than trying to do a DIY compression test with a, a typical compression tester. I know it can be done and in, in, in a pinch I'll, I may have to do that, but if I can get a real compression tester for the Mazda rotary engines and get a test done, I'd feel just better about it. So I am in the process of contacting a couple local shops that I do know have worked on, on, on RX-7. So hopefully I can get that done soon just to, just to get a, a preliminary estimate on what the real health of the engine is. So there's chances are we're gonna have to do the apex seals, all the internal seals. Eventually we will pull the engine out of the car to take a look at all the different housings and see if there's any damage to the housings or cracks or anything of that nature that we'll have to be concerned about. But uh, for now, I think we're gonna focus on this light issues and getting the brakes fixed. Uh, lots of cosmetic things that we'll go around the car and look at, um, you know, just lots of little missing bits and pieces. Uh, so let's take a quick look around the car at some of those items. Okay, so one of the items I definitely want to address soon is I want to get all these rib nuts out. Some of them have started to rust. A lot of them are twisting when you try to remove uh, the screw. So I believe it's going to be a pain to try to get all those rib nuts removed. Um, probably have to cut, cut a lot of these screw heads off and then drill out the rib nut itself. They do look like they are some sort of alloy, uh, aluminum. Um, so hopefully they're, they'll be fairly easy to drill out or grind out. Uh, the ones that are like on the fenders and the front bumper, I can just cut those off from the back. The ones that are gonna be trapped, like the ones that are in here on the door trim, those will be very difficult to get out. But I will track down some rubber well nuts and do some stainless steel hardware and beauty washers and maybe, maybe get those all spray painted, uh, painted black. Front bumper's loose, definitely need to get that looked at. We're also missing the bezels for the headlights on both sides. In the engine bay, we are, we're missing a few little small things I can see right off the bat. I did check all the fuses and there's some uh, main fuses that are missing. Um, there's a few little bolts here and there that I'll need to track down, like a fender bolt there. The wheel is, it's, uh, it's definitely rubbing when it goes lock and it's, it's hitting up against a piece of the actual body. So I'll need to see what I can do about getting that cleaned up. Um, while I'm in here, uh, that, that wire loom has been damaged. Um, I can barely see the wires. I don't know if the wires have been damaged, but the loom itself is definitely damaged. So I'm going to need to get that. The fender liner is missing and I believe there's some, uh, there's a little bit of wire, that wire loom right there that's also damaged. So I'll definitely want to pull that apart and check out the status of all those little wires. So I did find that this weather trim here, seal here looks like it needs to be replaced. I, I can't tell there's any water damage inside, so it may actually still be sealed, but I definitely will want to probably get this, 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 uh, this trim piece replaced. I also noticed that the uh, spoiler here is actually holding water. Every time I lift the gate up, a bunch of water comes pouring out of it and it actually filled this channel here 
and dripped out and I haven't had the car out in the rain. It was probably last in the rain when it was shipped to my house or, uh, uh, but yeah, I, I have no idea where the water is being saved, but I'm definitely gonna need to look into that. While we're back here, the, the back side is missing some, the liner for the hatch. There is uh, some loose, like the, uh, the strut tower piece here is broken, uh, needs to be replaced. Uh, and generally it's all there, just needs, just needs a good cleaning. But there are a few small items I'm gonna have to track down. In the car, that's probably where I have the most work cut out for me. There's lots of trim pieces that are loose. Um, I, think, I think the tabs are actually broken on this, so it, it sits in there okay. Well, I say that. It sits in there, but it doesn't actually, it's pretty easy just to pop out. We're also missing the, the, the security and the overheat warning lights. Um, I'll have to see if I can track those down. The, the e-brake is pretty rough shape. Probably get that replaced. The shift boot is not, does not fit very well and leaves a lot of the center console exposed. So I'll probably try to track down something better to fill that space. The radio is not mounted and it is not working right now. So there's probably a wiring issue or something's come loose or a fuse, but I'll need to get a bezel and a bracket to mount the, the radio. Uh, otherwise, I think most of the dash functions are working okay. Uh, I checked all the wipers, they seem to be working okay. All the sprayers are working okay. Turn signals, lights, they all, that all seems to be working okay other than the issue with the front. The carpet definitely needs to be replaced. I've been looking for weeks to get an OEM carpet and I know that's gonna be very, very difficult, but I'm not gonna give up hope and I am gonna keep hunting online, both in the United States and Japan, China, uh, Australia, some other places that have RX-7s that are right-hand drive. See if I can track down it doesn't necessarily have to be OEM, but something that's actually fit, made to fit a right-hand drive uh, RX-7. And because the, 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 one of the previous owners converted to these, I don't know what these kinds of mirrors are. They're, they're definitely not uh, mounted very well, but we're missing the trim there. Also missing the similar trim here over the, the door handle and lock. We've got some little cruddy pieces inside here. Um, the door panel actually is, are actually in okay shape. They, they're scratched up for sure, but all in all, you know, this door trim piece, I think I'll, I can get, a, I can get some of those offline pretty easy. Uh, all the weather stripping is actually really good in the car. Um, I mean, no tears that I have been able to find yet, and it still feels nice and plush and pliable. So I'll probably just get some, you know, rubber interior restore, um, product and rub on there just to, you know, keep, to keep the condition all the rubber but i checked both sides i've checked everything around the hatch everything looks good with the rubber sealing okay so we have a lot of work to do and i, I think a lot of people that have seen the, the this car uh whether it's in person or in the videos have made comments about how much work the car needs and it definitely needs a lot of work but all things considered most of them most of the car is there Finding some of the right-hand drive specific parts is gonna be very difficult. Um, you know, fender liners, things like that, that won't matter whether it's left-hand or right-hand drive. I'll have to uh, see if I can find a donor car or parts car and try to get as many of those pieces as I can. So anyway, I think uh, the next video is going to be on the installation of the Rocket Bunny daytime running lights and just the wiring of all that. And I will also be checking the reverse switch on the manual transmission to see if that's the reason why the reverse lights aren't working. Um, I'm gonna get the car lifted up, get under there, uh, put a ohm meter on that switch and see if it's actually working or not. So if it's not the switch, then it, it could be, I have no idea. I'll go down a rabbit hole trying to chase that. But for now, I'm gonna start with the obvious things. That, the switch, the fuses, uh, I will go back and check and make sure the lights are fine. I believe they're fine, but I'll check that again. So uh, yeah, the RX-7 is definitely going to be a money pit for a little while. The cosmetics of the car, I, you know, I live in a blue country, so I don't know if long term this red is the color that we're going to want to keep on the car. Uh, I have to make a decision on whether or not I want to keep the Rocket Bunny kit or fake Rocket, Rocket Bunny kit. Uh, the fitment is pretty good. There's some waviness here and there that, you know, if I wanted to make this a really nice car, I'd have to get addressed. But 
I'll probably leave it on for now just because that's easier than trying to refine all the replacement parts and then fixing where the rear tires were cut out. But, um, but the cosmetic stuff is probably gonna get put on hold until we've addressed the safety and the mechanical stuff. So uh, thanks for watching the video. If you like this video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below and I will make sure to try to respond to as many of those as I can. Uh, I will be probably trying to put out a video about once a week. Uh, I do have some, uh, my, my, my work is, is fairly busy a lot of times, and so getting out here on the weekends will really depend on the weather and family stuff. So I am gonna try to shoot to get one video out a week, and most of them will focus on the RX-7 for right now, just because, well, that's why we got it. So there'll be lots of projects there, but I'm really hoping to do something neat with this car and make it stand out. So thanks for watching. And remember, get out there and drive.